The Smith chart is an incredibly useful tool for visualizing the impedance and the corresponding reflection coefficient and seeing how both of these change as one quote unquote moves on the transmission line. First let's take a uh, look at the math behind the Smith chart and I'm writing down the familiar equation for the reflection coefficient gamma and we know that we can normalize gamma by dividing, uh, by dividing it by the characteristic impedance Z0 and so we get uh, little ZL minus 1 over, over ZL plus 1 and little ZL is defined as the normalized impedance which is the, the actual load impedance uh, big ZL divided by the characteristic impedance of the transmission line Z0, typically 50 ohms. And we can um, write, write that as a real part and an imaginary part. I can then write gamma as R plus Jx plus 1, actually um, minus 1. divided by r plus jx plus 1 and that can be written as gamma r the real part of gamma plus j gamma i the imaginary part of gamma I can multiply the numerator and the denominator by the complex conjugate of the denominator to get both the real part and the imaginary part of gamma and I'm writing the full expressions for these here. Okay, now using some algebraic manipulation I can get these two equations into the following form and we're going to see why this form is, is a very useful way of, uh, of looking at these equations. You might start to recognize this form as being an equation of a circle. So both of these equations define circles in the gamma plane uh, and my gamma plane has an x-axis which is the real part of gamma, gamma r, and a y-axis the imaginary part of gamma, gamma i. The first equation I'm going to call a constant R circle because as you see it is this circle is completely defined by the variable R. It has a center <coughs> of positive R divided by R plus 1 comma 0. has a radius of 1 over r plus 1. Now the second circle I'm going to call a constant x circle because it is completely defined by the variable x which is the imaginary part of the normalized load impedance and r, little r of course was the real part of the normalized load impedance. So the constant x circle has a center equal to, or the coordinate of the center equal to 1 comma 
1 over x and a radius equal to 1 over the magnitude of x. So the Smith chart is basically a collection of all of these circles all plotted together on the gamma plane. And, and the circles are defined by little r, which is the re real part of the normalized impedance. And little r can be anywhere from 0 to positive infinity. And little x, which can be anywhere from negative infinity to positive infinity, since little x is the imaginary part of the normalized um, impedance and it can be a, a negative j or it can be a positive j. Note that the magnitude of gamma has to be less than 1 so it's only the points on these circles which satisfy this condition that are going to be part of the Smith chart. What I'm going to do now is draw the locus of uh, circle centers in the gamma plane and we're going to see how the the centers change when little r changes and when uh, little x changes. So here's our gamma plane. And let me draw a circle with a radius of 1. And since we know that gamma, the magnitude of gamma has to be less or equal to 1. That means that all of the points on the Smith chart have to be contained within this circle. Let me draw the center points of the constant R circles. We know from the equation that as R increases, or as it goes from 0 to infinity, the center points of the constant R circles move from r equals from 0, 0 from the origin to 1, 0. Okay, now let's uh, draw the center points of the constant x circles. And again from the equation, we know that as x changes from positive infinity to 0, the, the center points of the circles move from 1 comma 0 to 1 comma positive infinity. On the other side, as x changes from negative infinity to 0, the, the circle centers move from 1 comma 0 to 1 comma negative infinity. Or to say it in the opposite way, as the magnitude of x increases, the circle center moves from 1 comma negative infinity to 1 comma 0. So now let me draw a bunch of these um, constant x and constant r circles which give shape to the Smith chart. So here's our gamma plane. This is the origin where gamma is zero. And then let's say that these ticks are uh, one. And so this is the circle for gamma is equal to one, or the magnitude of gamma is equal to one. And it's also the r equals zero circle. Okay, so let me, let's draw a bunch of um, constant R circles. This is the R equals 1 circle, where the, the center point is 1 half and the radius is 1. This is the R equals 2 circle, uh, which has a center of 2 thirds and, uh, and a radius of 1 half. 
And the last circle I'll draw is the R equals 0.5 circle, which has um, a center of one third and a radius of two thirds. Now let's draw some uh, constant x circles. This is the circle corresponding to x equals 0.5. And I'm only drawing the part of this circle which fits within the, you know, within our boundary, which is the um, gamma equals one boundary. So then I drew the x equals plus one circle and the x equals plus two circle. And I'm going to do the same on the negative or on the bottom half of the of the Smith chart. So this is basically the Smith chart. It is a collection of constant R circles and constant X circles that are contained within a circle whose radius is equal to one. So now let's uh, let's see what are the what are the main uses of the Smith chart. What does it enable us to do? So the first one thing that the Smith chart enables us to do is we can plot the uh, the vector gamma on the Smith chart, and then just simply read off the impedance by seeing where does uh, the gamma point land on which x circle does it land on, and then on which R circle does it land on. We can also go the other way by plotting uh, the impedance and then from that graphically seeing what is our gamma. Now the second use is that we we can see how the impedance changes as we move on the transmission line. As we move away from the load and towards the generator. Now what does it mean to to move on the transmission line um, as far as the Smith chart is concerned. So we, the way in which we move on the Smith chart is we rotate the vector gamma, the reflection coefficient. And remember that that gamma at any point on the transmission line or let's say that at a distance L away from the load is defined by gamma of zero, which is the reflection coefficient at the load. And then to that vector, you add a phase, um, which is equal to uh, two multiplied by beta L, or I should say minus two beta L, which is a phase that varies linearly with L.